Hey everyone, Rodney here at Cleaves Tech, and today I have a quick one for you. Today I'm going to give you a quick rundown on using MM Audio. MM Audio is an AI powered tool that generates high quality synchronized audio for videos or text inputs. It can create realistic sound effects, background music, or ambient noises that match your video content or text descriptions, making it perfect for video creators and filmmakers looking to enhance projects quickly without a sound engineer. And it can be used locally and is easy to set up using Pinocchio. If you're not using Pinocchio, but like to use local AI tools, you should consider installing since it makes projects simple to install and use. I'm not gonna cover installing MM Audio manually in this video, and I'll just be covering installing it with Pinocchio. If you don't have Pinocchio, it's simple to install, and there are instructions on their website. When you click on the download link, it brings you through, tells you exactly what to do. It's really simple. Now, once you have Pinocchio, up and running. You have a window like this. Now I have other apps in here already installed. If I wanted to launch them, that's how I would just click on them here. But we're gonna go and uh, click on the Discover tab up in the top right. And once we click on there, we can start typing in MM, and then we find MM Audio. At that point, we're just gonna click on MM Audio, then click on Download. It'll open up a new window as you see here, and it gives you the option to save it as a different name i just go with the default and click download now once you click download it takes a few moments it does a real quick clone and sets things up initially now you can customize this as with anything in pinocchio set it up for local share things like that we're not going to do that today we're just going to go with a standard install so we'll just click on install it should then install now this does take some time depending on your internet connection since it does have to download the models so i'm going to go ahead and let this go and speed this up now once it's done you should have the mm audio interface up on the screen on the left you will see the terminal tab which if you click on that you can always see what's happening in the background also there's the stop button so you can stop the application we'll go back to the open web ui now there are three sections to MM Audio. Most people I assume will be using the video to audio section here, but there is also the text to audio section as well. If you wanna just describe what you want for audio, you have image to audio, which is an experimental mode and that you give it an image and it works just like the uh, video one as well. So we're gonna cover the video to audio mostly because it pertains to pretty much all the same settings are in these. Now, one thing you will notice up here it does say that if you're using very high quality high resolution videos it's going to take longer and that is definitely the case although if it's a short five to ten second clip probably is not going to make a real big difference unless you have really low end hardware i have a 4070 with 12 gigabytes of vram just to let you know so it does do it pretty quickly um just a few seconds for most of them what i will do is if you do have a longer clip what i suggest doing is using your video editing software to basically create a low quality version and then bring it into here, get the audio and then go back into your editing software, pull that audio out and remix it back in with the high quality video. And you'll get just as good a result from doing it that way. Now, once you've got your video in here, there's multiple things I will note. Well, for one thing down here, if you wanted to use a webcam, you could click on that button here. Once you click into here, you can access the webcam, set up, do the recording and everything else. I don't use it for that purpose myself. Now, the other thing is once the video is in here, you can also click up here on the trim button to then at that point trim your video if you want to do that. I'm not going to be doing that with this. Now, usually my first thing I do once I put a video in here before I do anything, since it does work so quickly, I'll just go ahead and give it a try and see what it does without doing any of changing any of the settings. If the clip is shorter than what this is set for, that's not an issue. It'll if you go into the terminal, it'll show you that it will actually shorten it itself. It knows that. But if it's longer, you do want to set that for the correct duration. So we're going to go ahead and we'll just hit submit on this. And it should only take from me probably about seven to eight seconds to get this to process. OK, so we have our output at this point. I can go ahead and I'll hit play. And we get our audio. Now, I personally probably be pretty happy with that. And then I could just go ahead, hit download, and I'm all done. But if you didn't like the results, you can one, just keep running it again until you get exactly what you want. Or you can add something to the prompt to help guide the video to know what you want. 
So in all honesty, I don't find I use the prompt an awful lot unless it's a more complex scene and it has a hard time fully understanding what I want to come out of that. Then I'll put something in the prompt to help guide it. Now, the other big one would be the negative prompt. Now, the negative prompt is actually, I find, a lot more useful than the regular prompt. And the reason for that is a lot of times when you generate these videos, it might create some background music if it's not sure what it should have, or it might create somebody talking, voices, things like that. In that case, what I'll add into here is I'll put speaking, narration, voice, voiceover, talking, things like that to help explain to it. I don't want those things. Like I said, the negative prompt is one of your more important features. I use an awful lot in here. It gets rid of things that you may not want to hear in there. Let's say you have a clip and it just keeps adding like a barking dog in the background or something like that because there's a dog in the image, but you don't want that, then you can go ahead and put that in there, put dog barking, things like that, and it will help doesn't always solve it, especially if you have one that's very obvious with somebody speaking on screen. That can be a little bit harder, but I find it can work. Now, as for the other settings in here, seed is, is just a random number it uses to generate. Now, if you've used AI tools before, you're familiar with what the seed is. Uh, if you use the same seed in the same settings, you're going to get the same results. Now, the number of steps is, can be increased and this should most likely improve the quality like most other AI tools, but I find that the, the default works very well. I sometimes will set it to a little bit higher, but I don't find it really makes a big difference. Then you have the guidance scale, which is normally how well it follows the prompts. Another thing I haven't played around with much, I normally just leave it on whatever the default is. And as for the duration, as I said, I already covered that. As we'll see in the terminal here, since these were shorter, it automatically cut it down. One thing I do like doing, the other reason I like to not put anything in the prompt initially, I like to see what it comes up with. Since it only takes a few seconds, I like to go ahead and say, you know what? Let me see what you got. I'm curious how this is going to come out. Because sometimes it'll give me stuff that I wasn't expecting that I actually like better than what I was hoping for. There's another one. Worked perfectly well. I didn't have to put anything in there. Very happy with the results of that one. Just to give you an idea of what may or may not work. Now, this will not probably work because there is somebody visibly talking on the screen. Even though I have speaking, narration, voiceover, a lot of times if it's not much else going on in here, it will have a hard time overcoming that. Now, obviously, we can try to put higher guidance scale. I don't know if that will really make a difference here. I don't expect this to work, but I do want to kind of give you an idea of what it creates when somebody is talking because it is kind of funny. It has its own language, just basically speaks gibberish. So we'll go ahead, hit play. Now you'll notice here, this is a 10 second clip. This shows eight seconds because I did not change the duration. So it actually cut it short. So that's an example of the gibberish speaking that it will add. And as I said with this one, since he's blatantly talking on screen, there's nothing else going on. It is a little more difficult to overcome this. I've done it before. It can take quite a few tries sometimes. Usually you need to put something in the positive prompt, put enough of these things in the negative prompt, and then hopefully it will work. Like I said, this one's very difficult because there's not much else going on in the video. And one last thing I do want to show you is if you forget to download, you know, the audios, you want to go back and ever find those videos, you can always go to your files section up here and in the cache folder, the Gradio temp directory, if we click on that, each one of these, and we can open these in Explorer. Here we are. So we go into here, you'll see each one of these has the one of the videos in there and you can go back in there and pull those up if you forgot to click the download button. That pretty much covers MM Audio and how to use it. If you found the video helpful, please do hit the like button. And if you really want to help out the channel, I do have a link in the description that you can donate a cup of electricity. All that electricity is getting expensive. Any tips on using MM Audio I have not mentioned, please do put them in the comments for others. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.